I am Dr. Peter Abrams. I am a kidney pancreas transplant surgeon at the MedStar Georgetown Transplant Institute. As a kidney pancreas transplant surgeon, I see patients every day suffering from end-stage renal disease from diabetes or high blood pressure. Most patients who come to Georgetown for their transplant evaluation are already on dialysis, but we are seeing increasing numbers of patients who are not yet on dialysis who are being evaluated for transplant. And there are very clear data out there to suggest that the best outcomes in kidney transplant are in those patients who have not yet started dialysis. It is also true that patients who are suffering from kidney disease from their diabetes can be evaluated for a pancreas transplant at the same time as they're being evaluated for their kidney transplant and so receive a simultaneous kidney and pancreas transplant to address both their diabetes and their end-stage renal disease. Outcomes after pancreas transplant are generally excellent. We expect every pancreas transplant that we perform to last anywhere from 10 to 15 years, and that is off insulin entirely. The secondary benefit of a pancreas transplant involves the curing of one's diabetes and the prevention of that diabetes from injuring the kidney transplant, which occurred at the same time. There are so many different aspects of this job that I really enjoy. I love interacting with my patients. I love playing a role in transplantation and giving these folks a new lease on life. I enjoy seeing patients in recovery and in the post-operative clinic and you know, sharing in, in their experiences through the entire transplant process. My patients are very near and dear to me and I would do anything for them. Their happiness and their enjoyment of their life after their transplant is almost as important to me as the quality of the function of the transplant itself. The main benefit of pancreas transplant is that you are cured of your insulin-dependent diabetes. It goes away. So you will no longer be on any insulin. You will no longer have to check your glucose levels. You will no longer have to eat a diabetic diet. You will move on with your life and you will no longer be a diabetic. The other advantage of pancreas transplant is that most pa patients who require a pancreas transplant also require a kidney transplant. The ability to receive both a pancreas and a kidney transplant at the same time significantly decreases your waiting time for a kidney transplant on the order of many years. So most patients who are listed for a kidney and pancreas transplant will be transplanted within one year of their listing. And that is in comparison to waiting for a kidney on the kidney transplant list, which can sometimes take five or six years. The other uh, advantage of a pancreas transplant is that by curing one of their diabetes, it also stops and sometimes reverses the secondary complications of diabetes, which include retinopathy, neuropathy, and um, sometimes what's called hypoglycemic unawareness, where patients don't realize their glucose levels are dropping due to changes in their uh, central nervous system, and that can lead to life-threatening uh, scenarios. The easiest way to know if you need a pancreas transplant is to consider how difficult it is for you to manage your diabetes. If you find that your quality of life in managing your insulin dependent diabetes is manageable, not too bad, you don't find yourself going to the doctor to seek advice, you don't find yourself being admitted to the hospital for diabetic complications, then most of the time these patients do not require a pancreas transplant. 
However, in patients who find themselves repeatedly being hospitalized for diabetes-related complications, uh, patients who find themselves requiring more and more insulin, um, patients who find themselves having a significantly diminished quality of life due to the self-therapy uh, that goes into managing one's diabetes, those are the patients that should be considered for a pancreas transplant. Patients on dialysis typically are either on dialysis because of high blood pressure or because of diabetes. Patients who are on dialysis for high blood pressure would not be candidates for a pancreas transplant. However, patients with diabetes who have serious complications from their diabetes, as well as kidney problems, those patients should be considered for pancreas transplants. There are three types of pancreas transplants. There's combined kidney pancreas, pancreas after kidney transplant, and pancreas transplant alone. By far the most common type of pancreas transplant is the combined kidney pancreas transplant. About 85% of all pancreas transplants every year are this type of transplant. The benefits of a combined kidney pancreas transplant um, are many. The uh, number one benefit of a combined kidney pancreas transplant is that you're getting two organs during one operation. That transplant is occurring much quicker than it otherwise would if you were only waiting for a kidney transplant because the wait list for a combined kidney pancreas transplant is much shorter. And so the time to transplant is a much shorter period of time. You are curing um, your diabetes at the time of a combined kidney pancreas transplant, so the diabetes will not injure your new kidney transplant, which allows your kidney transplant to last much longer. The only scenario where it makes sense to receive a kidney transplant prior to your pancreas transplant is if you have a living donor available that would want to donate a kidney to you. Living donor kidneys work the best and they work the longest, and so it makes a lot of sense to re receive a living donor kidney transplant and follow that up after you've recovered from your kidney transplant with a pancreas transplant. A pancreas transplant is uh, performed in the lower abdomen. Typically, the pancreas goes to the patient's right side. The pancreas is hooked up to the blood vessels that supply one's leg. Uh, that portion of the operation takes anywhere from two to four hours to perform, depending on the complexity of the case. The patient's uh, blood glucoses after the pancreas is hooked up will begin to normalize even before we close the incision. The patient will be then transferred to an intensive care unit for a few days uh, following a pancreas transplant just for careful monitoring, not because they're uh, acutely ill. And following um, intensive monitoring in the intensive care unit, the patient is transferred to the floor for another couple of days before discharge. A combined kidney pancreas transplant just involves both operations. So typically the kidney transplant is performed first and it is placed on the left side of the patient. It is hooked up to the blood vessels that supply the patient's left leg. And following the completion of the kidney transplant, the pancreas transplant is then performed on the patient's right side. It is a common misconception that we remove the patient's native organs prior to kidney or pancreas transplant. In fact, we leave their native kidneys alone and we leave their native pancreas alone and we give them an additional organ.
The main risk to consider in a pancreas transplant is that it is a big operation. And with any major operation, there are always risks of bleeding and infection. Um, that doesn't change in a pancreas transplant. Um, it's important to receive a pancreas transplant in a high volume experience center. Th that way, any complications from a pancreas transplant will be identified early and hopefully managed skillfully so that patients can continue to do well. We encourage patients with living donors to proceed with their living donor kidney transplant since living donor kidneys work the best and they work the longest. These patients, once they've recovered from their living donor kidney transplant, can then come back, be reevaluated for a pancreas transplant, and if it still suits them to receive a pancreas transplant, we can list them and transplant them after their living donor kidney transplant. By doing their pancreas transplant following their kidney transplant, we then allow that kidney transplant to last as long as possible by curing them of their diabetes and preventing secondary injury to their kidney by their diabetes. There is no question that certain patients with type 2 diabetes can benefit from a pancreas transplant. It's important to identify patients who have type 2 diabetes who are not overly insulin resistant and who have stopped making a lot of insulin themselves. These patients tend to be thin and they tend to appear clinically like type 1 diabetics. These patients, with careful screening, can benefit from a pancreas transplant. Patients with type 2 diabetes who happen to be obese are often evaluated for a pancreas transplant, but unfortunately, most of these patients are not candidates for pancreas transplant. We have found that the complication rate after pancreas transplant in obese type 2 diabetics is too high to justify doing the transplant. And moreover, we find that the benefit in these patients is not enough to justify the risks that go into a pancreas transplant in this patient population. Any patient who has received a pancreas transplant will tell you that the quality of life is excellent and the time and effort that they had to put into managing their diabetes prior to their transplant compared to the time and effort required to manage their immunosuppression following their transplant is much, much, much greater. So I have yet to meet a diabetic who received a pancreas transplant who isn't thrilled with their new quality of life. Most of the time when I talk to patients about how long this pancreas transplant will last, I tell them that our goal would be for this pancreas to last 10 to 15 years, which usually sounds pretty good to them. We of course would like that pancreas to last a lifetime, but there are lots of factors that go into how long a pancreas lasts, namely immunosuppression, factors with the donor, uh, factors with the recipient. So we try to optimize all of these variables so that the pancreas lasts as long as it can last. Because it is not straightforward to detect rejection in a pancreas transplant like it is for a kidney transplant, we run immunosuppression levels slightly higher in pancreas transplants than we do in kidney transplants. And that is true in the early postoperative period, and it's also true in the more maintenance, longer term postoperative period as well. When I ask my pancreas transplant patients how difficult it is to manage their immunosuppression medications compared to their diabetes medications prior to their transplant, they all say that the immunosuppression medications are much easier to manage. And they find that once they have proper teaching and proper counseling, that the immunosuppression medications really 
do uh, present a pretty minimal, minimal challenge to them. Most patients after a pancreas transplant will be in the hospital anywhere from seven to 10 days. The early part of that hospitalization will occur in an intensive care unit for close glucose monitoring. And the latter part of the hospitalization will be on the floor where they'll be walking around and eating a regular diet, getting used to their new medications, and making sure that it's safe for them to go home and spend the rest of their recovery uh, at home with their loved ones. After a pancreas transplant patient is discharged from the hospital, he or she will come back to clinic within a couple of days, and we will see that patient about two times per week for the first two weeks, and then weekly, and then monthly, just based on clinically how they're doing. The more rapid uh, their recovery, the, uh, the quicker they return to their, their lives, um, and the um, less we have to um, see them in clinic. Patients with pancreas cancer are unfortunately not considered candidates for a pancreas transplant due to the nature of their disease process. The treatment of pancreas cancer usually involves resection if the disease has not progressed too rapidly and chemotherapy following that resection. And there has not been a role for pancreas transplant in that uh, treatment strategy, unfortunately. Patients after a pancreas transplant will be able to enjoy a regular diet. They will not be fragile to the point that their uh, immune systems will not allow them to get on airplanes or enjoy public events. In fact, we encourage them to go to concerts and go to weddings and get on airplanes and live life to the fullest. The reason why we're doing these transplants every day here is to allow people to get back to their lives and en enjoy themselves again.